Greet you in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Are we all here this morning? Ooh. Yeah. I think I enjoy that time of worship. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. I feel like I could just um, cuddle up in the blankets, you know, and play this, the songs and just be in that, you know, beautiful presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. Um, you guys have always just been faithful in the midst of the challenges. You guys are doing an awesome and a sterling job. I got to be part of the worship team uh, this week, and I can see the effort, you know, that they put in. Um, let's give them a, a, a hand of applause. North Pinus. <laughs> to the North Pine Baptist Church this morning. Um, I greet you in that all-prevailing name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are gathered here, fellowship of believers this morning, to give Him the honor and praise, because He's been good, He's been faithful, and He's been so merciful towards each and every one of us. And years ago, my year, but you saw here and there, but our God has never failed us yet. Amen. If you are here for the... Oh, Lord, we are so thankful um, for your word. Uh, without your word, uh, we will be running around like headless chickens, lost, not knowing where to go. But your word is a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And you guide us, Lord, uh, through your word, your, your infallible word. Oh, it's, it's so true. If we look from Genesis to Revelation, we see a God who is uh, just involved with his people. And he reaches out to man and he calls out to man in an awesome sacrifice through his son, Jesus Christ. And he makes a way back to the Father when we were in the deepest pit of sin. Yes, Lord, you have saved us, and we are so thankful this morning. We pray that as we um, hear from your word, that we won't just be hearers of the word, but we, we will do that which the word commands of us to do. That we will apply it to our lives and change society, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Move in our midst. Have your way. Pray, Lord God, that it will be nothing about man, but all about you this morning. For Jesus is at the center of it all. And so we know that the grass withers and the flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Amen and amen. This morning, I am going to um, be reading a text uh, from Colossians 1, from verse, and just verse 13. Uh, but before I read the text, um, allow me to give you some background, and then we'll get to the text, we'll read together. And my title this morning is, He Has. Can anybody say that? He Has. Thank you, thank you so much. So he has, okay? So, so a bit of a background in the book of Colossians. And um, according to my studies and observations, how um, this letter comes across. So Paul is in prison uh, uh, in Rome, and he writes this letter to the church in Colossae, originally known as a pagan city. He has never met them, but he worked with a man named Epaphras. Wait, Epaphras. While in Ephesus, okay? So Colossae being Epaphras' hometown. Paul 
um, then sends uh, Epaphras to share the good news of Christ with the city there. And he, um, Epaphras, this is, was then later arrested and then also put into a Roman prison. Paul then uh, gets feedback um, from Epaphras about what is happening in the city. Um, you know, give me some feedback. What's been happening there? How's the work going in that city? Um, and then upon hearing, you know, the report, decides to write the letter uh, to, to, to this church there. One thing to note is that Paul knew, uh, the people knew who Paul was, um, and he was very respected because of the work that he had done. The feedback from Epaphras was something like this. The town of Colossia. Mic check, mic check. The town, thank you. The town of Colossia. There has arisen a heresy which if it had been allowed to develop unchecked, might well have been the ruination of the Christian faith. According to Dr. We uh, William Barclay. So, if, well, so what is happening is, is this heresy that's spread, right? There's this false testimony of Christ that's been spread. And um, Paul is going to address this in uh, this letter. One of these heresies was an attack on, on the total adequacy and the unique supremacy of Christ. Let me repeat that. One of these heresies was an attack on the total adequacy and supreme, supreme, unique supremacy of Christ. In other words, Christ is not supreme. In other words, he is not adequate to save. Christ was then only a beginning. Christ was created, a created being and less than God in their thinking. Right? So Paul is going to address all of this, or just this one heresy that we're going to focus on this morning in this first chapter. And so in verse 3 he says, I'm praying for you. And I give thanks to God for you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father God and the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in the same sentence, uh, in that time could mean that he sees God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, as being equal and having this oneness about them. In uh, verse 4, he affirms their faith in God and the Lord Jesus Christ, Again, God and the Lord Jesus and for the love for the people. He reminds them in verse 4 of their faith. In verse 5 to 7, he reminds them of the message that they have received, their love and their faithfulness. And Paul asks God to fill them with knowledge, wisdom and understanding in the midst of what they are going through. In verse 11, however, Paul says this, and this is a sense of encouragement to the people. Have great endurance and patience. Have great endurance and patience. In the midst of the heresy that is spreading, in the midst of the confusion that is being caused, have great endurance and and patience and sometimes we um, can be so easily sucked in by the confusing of the times right things may be so confusing at times even as a believer sometimes we don't know what is going on around us sometimes we may find ourselves reading a passage of scripture and we confused by it one of the one of our youth guys we were watching a movie a documentary and he came in at the wrong time and he said no I'm, I'm done with this church with this youth because he missed the first part he came in at the wrong time and he was confused and I and I went to him and I said 
You came in at the wrong time. Let us sit and let us speak, you know. And it was so difficult to get him back into youth. And he was no bang, what can I do with you? Do you know what I mean? But in the midst of that times of confusion, have great endurance and patience. Maybe we can't see God working. We may have um, heard some false testimony of Christ, some heresy. It wants to throw you off your path, the path of righteousness. Sometimes you want to give up and you want to throw in the towel. You want to give up the faith because it is not working out for you. And the world wants to confuse us and make us forget what God has done. He has done it. I want to focus particularly on 1 Colossians 1 verse 13 and let us read together God's word and this is what it says this is he has done he has for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and he has brought us into the kingdom of, he, of the son he loves and in him we have redemption the forgiveness of sin. I hope that through my voice and through my reading of the text you get the three thoughts that I will be speaking about. The first one is this, as we remember what the Lord has done for us. And as we come to understand the supremacy and the reign of Christ in our lives, He has, number one, rescued us. He has rescued us. He has saved us from a difficult or a dangerous situation. Let me explain to you. We were hiking, right? Let me say, I was hiking. Let me put myself here. There was no one around. I didn't tie my laces. I slipped, I fell down the cliff. There was nobody. It was getting dark at night. The snakes were about to bite. Oh, I call out, help, help, there's nobody around. And I see a helicopter come, and the team come, and they pick me up, and they rescue me. I fly with the helicopter straight into the ER. God has rescued us. He comes, and he picks us up, and he takes us, and he rescues us. We were there, we were all there, we can all tell stories of when we were in a difficult and a dangerous situation and God rescued us. He has rescued us. The text goes on to say, from what has He rescued us? He rescued us from the dominion of darkness, the realm of Satan himself, a playground for sin and shame and he has rescued us from the DA. The, the demonic authorities. I know you were all thinking about the Democratic Alliance. I don't do that stuff. I do, uh -uh. The demonic authorities. The agents of evil. A lifestyle of darkness. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. God comes. He overcomes darkness. He conquers the enemy and He delivers us. He rescues us. Yes, delivers us. Mr. Delivery. Now, not the guys on the bikes that deliver food, Mr. Delivery. You know the, the guys that deliver the pizzas, Mr. Delivery, or the app. No, Mr. Delivery himself, our God, who reaches down in the mighty pit of sin. And he reaches and he takes us and he puts us into the kingdom of light. Our God, come on this morning, Mr. Delivery, give God praise. He rescues us. Just like the people in the Exodus, he rescues us. And He sets us free. Those who were enslaved, He sets us free. Our God, 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. He comes to rescue us. Rescue 911. 2 Timothy 4 verse 18 writes this and he says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. He has rescued us. All those who belong to him can testify that he has rescued us. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. He has. Not only has he rescued us, but he has also brought us into the kingdom of his son. Second point. He has brought us into the kingdom of his son. The contrast here is a, 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 a New Testament theme that goes throughout the New Testament where we will see the illustration of where there is darkness and then there is light. In some cases you will see there was war and, and, and there is peace. But he has done it. He has brought us. I like this when the, the, the New Living Translation, it says this, he has transferred us. It means it is transfer season. I don't even know what is transfer season. Any soccer fans here? Let us not go maybe to soccer, but okay. You had a bad play on your team, right? Your team is playing bad, but you may be a good player. And so what happens in transfer season? They take that good player and they place them into another team. I'm not going to say the team's name because we want to keep the peace here this morning. But just to give you now an example of a transfer, you know sometimes you take your, 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 your money from, from your, your credit, from your debit card and you transfer it, right? And you put it onto your credit card. <laughs> it's, it's, it's transfer. He's brought us. He has taken us. He's journeyed with us. And he has brought us. It is transfer season and transfer season is open here this morning. For we were taken from brokenness. Right? And he has placed us into a blessed assurance. We were lost and he has found us. We were in a state of hopelessness and he has given us hope. We were blind but now we can. He has turned our mourning into, and He has taken our sorrow and turned it into. We were dead, and now we are. And He has taken a nux, and He has turned him into an evangelist. He has taken a demon, and He has turned him and transferred him into a deacon. And He has taken a disaster, and He has turned that pastor's li li disaster's life around and turned him into a pastor. That's our God. There is nothing that our God cannot do. I know maybe we're sitting here praying for someone that is broken. Someone that has lost his way. It is transfer season. God is still in the business of saving lives this morning. He's still taking people. He's still bringing people. He's still transferring people this morning. He has done it. And He will continue to do it. Because He is our God. Our God is an awesome God. Maybe this morning you're not in the place where you should be. You're perhaps playing around with the darkness, playing in the playground of sin, despair and brokenness. He wants to transfer you to the light. The kingdom of His Son, the light. Let me give you a picture of the kingdom of light. The Son, Jesus Christ. In this kingdom you will find love. Love like no other. Grace, mercy, compassion, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He, he takes you from that dark kingdom and he places you into the kingdom of light of the radiance of the sun of his glory transfer season is here Matthew 3 13 sorry 
verse 44 says this, The kingdom is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. And then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has, and he buys that field. That is what the kingdom of the sun looks like. This man, because he found this treasure, he is willing to sell everything to buy that field. He tells me a lot. He's willing to give all that he has to acquire this kingdom, this kingdom of light that is filled with love, forgiveness, compassion, joy, peace. He has brought us into the kingdom of His Son. This is done through His Son, Jesus Christ. Number three, not only has He rescued us, not only has He brought us, oh, but He has redeemed us. I don't know, when I think about this word that He has redeemed us, I just feel like singing. I feel like singing, and maybe we should sing a bit later. Woo! How is Christ not adequate? How is Christ not supreme in the letter that is writing to the church? How is there any question for the debt of our forgiveness has been paid in full? The debt of our sin has been paid in full. Caesar Augustus, he didn't pay it. The chief priests, the Sanhedrin, they didn't pay it. None of the apostles or any great name in the Bible didn't pay it. Only the Son of God, he paid it. The unblemished Lamb of God, he takes away the sin of the world. There's nobody else. There's no one else that you can find out there that is adequate and supreme enough to carry the weight of each and every one of our sins sitting here and the entire world. But Christ Jesus, there's nobody else. It's only Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God. His name is Jesus, and He will save His people from their sin, the Savior of the world. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 to 19 says this, For you know that it was not worth perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to, your, handed down to you from your ancestors, but by the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. It was not worth gold or silver, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, this blood. Mm. It reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows through the lowest valley. Mm. The blood. That gives me strength. Ooh. It will never lose its power. One more time, it reaches. It reaches to the high. Mm. The blood that gives me strength. Whew. Amen. Oh. It's not always easy working on a sermon because you have you you, you reflect. 
so deeply oh, to where God has taken you from. Oh. We has brought you from and we has placed you. He has given me a life that I cannot imagine. In the midst of the difficulties and the storms that maybe we, we go through, I can still say thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I can't imagine going back there. Mm. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. In the midst of the confusion, in the midst of the heresies, and in the midst of where people want to delay you from where you ought to be and the road following Christ in the difficulty or dangerous times, have great patience. Have endurance knowing that God has rescued us. He has rescued us. He has brought us into the kingdom of His Son and He has redeemed us by his precious blood. The blood that has never lost his power. It, it will fail me to end it just here. Because if we look at the entirety of scripture. And to come to understand personally. In your own testimony. What Christ has done for you. We can sit here all day. And we can call out. All the things that he has done. For certainly he has healed us. He has provided for us. He has loved us with an everlasting love. A love that endures forever. He has been so good. And praise God, hallelujah. He has done great things. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you. That you have done it. You have done the work. You have put in uh, all the effort. And indeed, yes Lord, you have paid the ultimate price, Father God. You sent your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, so to transfer us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You are still doing it today. The blood of Jesus has never lost its power. And so I do pray, Lord God, if there is anyone here this morning that doesn't know you as personal Savior, that has not experienced the light of the Son of God, that they may come to know you through the power of your Holy Spirit. We say thank you, Lord. That it's not about man, it's not about any one of us. It's about you. It's always been about you and what you are able to do. We see through your word, we come to the conclusion that you have done the work. You have saved us. You have redeemed us. You've paid a price for our souls. You've taken away our sin, our shame and our guilt. And you call us into this beautiful kingdom of your son. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we thank you. For if it had not been for Jesus, where would we have been? May your grace and your mercy rest and abide with each one of us till Jesus comes and calls and all God's people say, Amen. of hope and real peace that all of the world needs to know. We have a mission to carry the gospel to every man that
that is lost. We have a mission of love and compassion, no matter what the cost. Piercing the night with the light.